So let's talk about the oxidation of fatty acids. Now we have basically three kinds of oxidations, but I'm going to state two here and we are going to focus on one kind of oxidation. Now we have the alpha oxidation of fatty acid and then we have the beta oxidation and there is a kind a, a, a third type of oxidation which falls other um, beta oxidation also. Now before we talk about what oxidation means or why we need to oxidize fatty acids, first of all, let us talk about what fatty acids are. Now, we said that fatty acids are long-chain hydrocarbons. They are long-chain hydrocarbons with a carboxylic acid head, that be COOH. Now, if I give you something like this, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I put COOH here. Now we, we are told that each of these angles here are carbon atom. So this is a carbon atom. Now this carbon atom attached directly to the carbon carrying the functional group, which is the carboxylic functional group, is the alpha carbon. Now this is the beta carbon. This is gamma. Now then this last carbon here is the omega carbon. Now so beta oxidation occurs between the beta carbon and then the gamma carbon. Are we getting it? Sorry. It occurs between the alpha and what? Gamma to form acetyl-CoA, which is acetyl-CoEnzyme A, which we are going to look at as time progresses. Are we getting it now? So, now, why do we need to actually form or oxidize um, fatty acid? Why do we need to oxidize fatty acid? Or what's the usefulness of oxidation of fatty acid oxidation of fatty acid is the breakdown of fatty acid to form what atp or to release energy now we said that the usefulness of uh, lipids in our body which fatty acid happens to be one kind of lipid is what generation of energy and energy is usually in the form of atp so the reason why we oxidize fatty acid is to what is to actually get atp or to generate atp now the first stage of oxidation of fatty acid is fatty acid activation. Now, fatty acid activation means that the fatty acid is activated to give the fatty acyl coenzyme A, fatty acyl coenzyme or CoA, fatty acyl CoA. Are we getting it now? Now the enzyme that carries out this function is called the thiokinase thiokinase enzyme or we can say is the acyl fatty acyl synthesis are we getting it so the enzyme that catalyzes this process is um thiokinase or thiokinase or acyl coa synthesis acyl-CoA-C10-T's. Now, that is the enzyme that catalyzes this process. Now, this first stage you see here, it follows a number of steps. It's not just what you see here. Now, the steps is what we are going to uh, take cognizance of. Now, for us to make things easier, for fatty acid, this fatty acid, I'm going to be using FA, okay? Now, the first step utilizes ATP. So, we have fatty acid plus ATP and this is the step that requires the thiokinase or acyl coa synthesis. okay require either thiokinase the thiokinase is also called acyl coa synthesis. now ATP can break down into two fragments now ATP can break down into ADP plus inorganic phosphate now the same ATP can also break down to AMP, which is adenosine monophosphate, and PPI. PPI means pyrophosphates. Are we getting it now? So in this case, it's breaking down into adenosine monophosphate. So the a uh, FA, which is a fatty acid, combines with the adenosine monophosphate, which is AMP, then plus pyrophosphate. Now, the pyrophosphate is what we catalyze this process or that will provide the energy that will drive this process, okay? So, 
Now, the next step is this complex uh, fatty acid and adenosine monophosphate that was formed here, which is fatty acid, adenosine monophosphate formed here, we react with coenzyme A to form a fatty acid coenzyme A or fatty acid coenzyme A plus AMP or fatty acid coenzyme A. That is what is going to form. Now, from here did we get this fatty acid then plus this uh, AMP plus coenzyme A. I said we form fatty acyl coenzyme A. Now, what we are going to do is very easy. This pyrophosphate PPI can be hydrolyzed using an enzyme called pyrophosphatase. Pyrophosphatase. And the product will be inorganic phosphate, which is PI. Two inorganic phosphates. Now, the product of this reaction now is what? Total reactions. Now, what we are going to do for this total reaction, write everything that are given or that we introduce into the reaction as part of the reactant and what is formed during the course of the reaction, reaction as part of the product. Now, if you look at the initial step, the steps, the reaction started with fatty acid. So we have fatty acid plus now what other thing was given in the total reaction? You agree with me that ATP was given in the total reaction plus what other thing was given again? Coenzyme A, right? So we now say plus co or co A, coenzyme A. Now this will be equal to what was formed. We form fatty acyl co A plus. Then we have um, adenosine monophosphate, which was formed during the course of the reaction, AMP, and then plus 2PI, which are two inorganic phosphates. And that is the product of that reaction. Are we getting this? Is the first stage. So the first stage is the activation of fatty acid toward fatty acyl coenzyme A. Activation of fatty acid to fatty acyl coenzyme A. Now the second step is. So let's give a brief summary of what happens in the first stage, which is the activation stage. Now, before that, I want to actually distinguish between acyl fatty acyl CoA, or let me say acyl group, and then the acetyl group. Now, there's a difference between them, or let me say fatty acyl CoA, and then acetyl CoA. Now, whenever you have, let's say, arrow C, double bond O, there you have S, C, O, A. Now, this is called Asi, Co, A. Now, Asi, Co, A, or let's say fatty Asi, Co, A, depending on the length of the arrow group. Are we getting it now? So, for instance, whenever you have, let's say, a very long chain like this, and then you have um, C double bond O and then S C O A, you call this an SI fatty SI co A. Now, however, if you just have Let's say CH3, C double bond O, S, C, O, A. You call this acetyl CoA. So you should be able to distinguish between the fatty acyl CoA and the acetyl CoA. Fatty acyl CoA is when you are talking about a very long chain. Are you getting it now? But when you are talking about just two carbon, you call it acetyl CoA. So there's no much difference between fatty acyl CoA and acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA now is just trying to tell you a specific kind of the acyl CoA, which is the one that has two carbon. 
Are you getting it? But the one that has, let's say, four carbon and above, you call it what? Fatty acyl CoA. Is that understood? So, if it is palmitic acid, you now call it what? Palmitic acyl what? CoA. Just like that. Now, so the summary of the reaction that occurs in the um, first stage, which is the activation stage, let's say this is a fatty acid, CH2, CH2, C double bond O, and then we have O minus. Now, there are a series of reactions that takes place here. First of all, we said the reaction required, if you look at the what we did initially, we said the reaction requires what? ATP. And that ATP is broken down to give us what? AMP plus what? PPI. In the presence of magnesium 2 plus ion. But that is not really the issue. Now, what other thing did we actually add to the reaction? We added CoA, acetyl CoA, which is COA. S H and then what did it, what did this give to us? This gives us fatty acyl CoA at the end of the day. If you follow the first process of the reaction, here we say a fatty acid is converted to fatty acyl CoA. So this is fatty acyl CoA. Now this process, this entire process like this, it does not occur in the mitochondria. It occurs in the cytosol of the cell. It occurs in the cytosol of the cell. Is that understood? This process occurs in the cytosol of the cell. Now, but the main beta oxidation, the beta oxidation, main main, or let me say beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria. Hmm? Beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria. So there is a need. Let's say you have the cytosol. And then you have the mitochondria. Okay. Now there is a need for a transporter that can transport the fatty SI CoA from the cytosol into the mitochondria. And that is where carnitine comes to play. That is where carnitine comes to play. So carnitine acts as a transporter. That transport fatty acyl CoA to what? From the cytosol of the cell to the mitochondria where beta oxidation takes place. Where beta oxidation takes place. Now, what is carnitine? What is the structure of carnitine? Or what is it? Now, carnitine is COO minus. They will have CH2. They will have CH. Here is what? CH, how many? 1, 2, 3. Here is CH2. Then you have nitrogen. Then you have positive charge here. Then you have CH3. CH3. And then CH3. 1, this is alpha and this is beta. So you call it beta hydroxy. Beta hydroxy trimethyl, or you can say NNN, or you can say trimethyl ammonium butyrate this trimethyl ammonium butyrate is on the gamma position so you say this beta hydroxy which is carnitine i'm talking about the structure of carnitine beta hydroxy there we have gamma trimethyl ammonium Ammonia because of the ion there, butyrate. Now, so that is the role of carnitine. And I don't want to go that much into the chemistry of how carnitine carries the uh, fatty acyl CoA from the cytosol to the mitochondria. Now, let's come to the big deal now, the big, the big issue. So, summary of reaction for, sorry, summary of reaction from this stage. After the cytosol of the cell, something happened. So we can say that carnitine is acting as the bridge between here to the what? To the mitochondria. Now, it is at the mitochondria that beta oxidation takes place. 
it are the mitochondria that beta oxidation takes place. Okay, let's look at what happens in the mitochondria. Now, beta oxidation itself it has four stages. Beta oxidation itself has how many stages? Four stages. Now, the four stages are one oxidation. The oxidation stage. Now, in this oxidation state, Si CoA fatty Si CoA undergoes dehydrogenation by a flavin dependent flavoenzyme Si CoA dehydrogenase. A double bond is formed between the alpha and beta carbon, that is between carbon 2 and 3. Now, let me explain what that place is all about. So, this is fatty Si CoA, which is arrow CH2 CH2. C double bond O, then we have SCOA. This fatty acyl CoA, right? Now, what it does is it undergoes oxidation by a flavin dependent enzyme. Are we getting it? So we can say this acyl CoA, or you can say fatty acyl CoA. It undergoes oxidation by a flavin dependent enzyme. Hmm? By a flavin dependent enzyme, which is FAD. Now, this FAD is given into the reaction. Now, FAD acts as an oxidizing agent. So, when FAD oxidizes this, it is reduced to what? FADH. Are you getting it? To FADH2. Now, approximately, FADH2 gives to ATP when it is transported into the electron transport system. But we are just going to state 2 ATP, but it's not at uh, 2 ATP per se. So, 2 ATP is being formed during the course of this reaction when it goes into the what electron transport chain are we getting it but it's not exact to atp but approximately when we are calculating the amount of atp that is generated in beta oxidation i mean in um better in the f let's say in beta oxidation rather then we'll look at the exact amount and not just the two atp so this flavin and then dinucleotide the um reduced form of it will be transported into the electron transport chain where it will be used to generate at least two atp so in this first stage here how many atp were generated about two atps are we getting it about but the experimented one was 1.5 atp we are going to talk about it when we start our calculation so at this first stage here in the mitochondria two atp were generated and then what do you think the product will be now in chemistry this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon now what did we say we say the enzyme that catalyzes this process is acyl coa dehydrogenase when you say something dehydrogenate it means it's removing what hydrogen from this reaction so it remove one hydrogen from here remove one hydrogen from here now note in chemistry whenever two hydrogens are removed what are you expected to form you're expected to form a double bond so this one now is going to come here to form arrow now remember that one hydrogen was removed from here so this becomes ch double bond one hydrogen was removed from here this becomes ch and then this becomes c double bond o and what SCOA. And then the name of this product is called trans coa trans coa because it's an enol. Are we getting a trans coa That is the name. Now, akins can be in two forms. They can be in the form of cis and they can be in the form of what? Trans. But this part, this particular one they are telling us is in the trans form, which is trans enol coa now after this stage the next stage is hydration in the electron um the next stage is hydration the inoco a hydratase which is the enzyme that will act on this now brings about hydration of the double bond to form beta hydroxy coa now what is that step all about you pick this trans inoco a now let's say we bring it up here which is arrow ch double bond ch c double bond o and they will have s c o a now 
you bring the is being hydrated when you say something is hydrated what does that mean it means that h2o is added as part of the reaction now in chemistry something can happen here are we getting it it from beta hydroxy co a beta hydroxy acy co a rather h2o we split into h and what oh is that not so so the h now will come here the alpha carbon why the oh we go to the beta carbon so if that happens what are we expected to have here we expected to have r there here is what ch here is what oh here we the double bond we break since h2o is coming in then this becomes ch now we add the hydrogen here are we getting it because we say when h2o break it forms h and oh the oh has added here the hydrogen added and the double bond will work break now <clears throat> this becomes c double bond o i here become s c o a and this is called beta hydroxy beta hydroxy acy co a and the name of that enzyme that catalyzes that process is enoy coa hydratase from the substrate you'll be able to get it eno coa what hydratase what is this eno coa being hydrated so you call it ni coa what hydratase it form b hydroxy acy coa now the next step this B hydroxy A cycle A now will be oxidized. It will be what? Oxidized. So let me go to a fresh sheet. I pick B hydroxy A cycle A, which is this arrow CH2, then CH. Here is what? OH. Here is CH. Okay, let's just say if this hydrogen add ah, is CH2 instead of writing the H on top, O is here, and then we have this. This is B hydroxy SI CoA. Now this B hydroxy SI CoA, I said it will be oxidized. And when almost all the reaction will be talking about when oxidation is talked about, they are usually oxidizing agents that are used. And this case is mostly nicotinamine and then dinucleotide changing to what? Changing to NADH plus plus H plus. Are we getting it? Nicotinamine and then is, is oxidizing the therefore it becomes reduced. And then this NADH plus is sent into the electron transport chain. Okay? To form how many ATPs? Three ATPs. But it's not three. This is an approximate amount. The uh, amount is what? 2.5. Now, if you come here, this first one, we say we say 2 ATP here. It is not two. It uses approximately 1.5 or it generates 1.5 ATP. But to run it up to a whole number, you say 2 ATP. But when we want to calculate the exact amount, we use 1.5 ATP. So, two ATPs, I mean, three ATPs were generated in that step. And then the enzyme that catalyzes this process is called beta what do we have here beta hydroxy now in this biochem whenever you see dehydrogenase it's telling you that is what oxidizing the process so we have dehydrogenase beta hydroxy dehydrogenase now whenever alcohols are oxidized what are you expected to form you're expected to form a ketone so this gives us arrow ch2 ch double bond o are you getting it c double bond o then ch2 then c double bond o and then we we'll have s this now this is called beta keto a cycle a a cycle a so we've talked about about three stages right the first stage is the first stage is uh, oxidation are you getting it then the second stage is hydration second stage is hydration after it has been oxidized is hydrated 
then the third step is oxidation again which we've talked about just now third step is oxidation again and then finally the first step is cleavage cleavage so these are the four steps first step is this oxidation we oxidize a cycle a to what to trans co a then after trans co a we hydrated trans co a to beta hydroxy a cycle a then beta hydroxy a cycle a is oxidized to beta keto acid co a then from here now we now cleave which is the cleavage stage and that is the last step of beta oxidation that is the last step of beta oxidation now beta keto acid co a will be cleaved now what did i say about um about this particular what is it called beta oxidation we say is cleavage to form what acetyl coa which we could now go into the krebs cycle to generate what energy is understood because we said the krebs cycle is like a common meeting point for all the metabolic pathway for both um carbohydrate lipids and what amino acid so what we are going to do is split this at position number two that is why it is called beta oxidation I mean beta oxidation which is cleavage beta cleavage at position number two so here is what alpha and here is what beta are you getting it now so what we are going to do now is split this at the beta carbon split this at the beta carbon which is this carbon here sorry there was something i there was a i think i did one uh, illustration the other time i think i did one illustration before now sorry about that it's supposed to be the carbon between the sorry the carbon between the alpha between the beta and what gamma so we split it at the beta carbon are you getting it now so when it is split at the beta carbon what are we expected to form now this cleavage stage does not just happen like that let me bring it up here you have arrow ch2 c double bond o then CH2, C double bond O, SCOA. Now, look at it and better appreciate it. It does not just occur like that. You have to put in coenzyme A, which in most cases is like this, coenzyme A. And then the enzyme that catalyzes this process, we say so coenzyme A is put into the process. And then the enzyme that catalyzes this process is called a thiolase. A thiolase. Are we getting it now? So when this is split at this beta carbon here, what happened? This coenzyme A that you put into the process will come and attach itself to this acyl group, and this group will become a different group. So what do we think will be the product then? Product will be RO CH2 C double bond O. What did I say? I told you the coenzyme A will come and attach here. So this becomes SCOA, which is this coenzyme A plus now this ch2 to maintain the valency of carbon to be four what will happen it changes to what ch3 then c double bond o and then we have scoa which is what acetyl co a which is acetyl co a and this is the product of beta oxidation and this is everything you need to know about the beta oxidation process now notes i distinguish between acetyl co a and acyl co a now this is let me bring out the two products the two products are arrow ch2 c double bond o SCOA plus there was ch3 c double bond o and the soa now this is acetyl co a And this is what acyl CoA. Now, what you should know is this acyl CoA now it may be another long chain entirely, which should be broken down because what we did here was just to remove two carbons from here. Is that not so? Two carbons we removed from here. So what we are going to do is acyl CoA can be regenerated again to undergo beta oxidation. So at every stage, acetyl CoA is being removed. Are you getting it? So, if for instance they give you, let's say, a 16 carbon, let, or let's say 16 carbon acyl CoA, 16 carbon uh, fatty acid, rather, if they give you a 16 carbon fatty acid, you see that 
after all those processes of beta oxidation, how many uh, uh, um, acetyl CoA we gener generated? Just one, right? So it means that at the end of the first reaction, which is the first cycle, it will change to 14. That is to say, about acetyl CoA has been given off. Are we getting it? Then after the second reaction, that means it will have to undergo the beta oxidation again. Then this one will change to what? 12. Undergo it again, 10. Undergo it again, 8. Undergo it again, 6. Undergo it again, 4. Undergo it again, then it will turn to what? 2. By this time, all the fatty acid, which is the long shape fatty acid, has been broken down to what? All acetyl CoA. What I mean by this statement, please take note of it because this is what will serve as the um, as the platform. Or let me say, this is what will give you the background of what we are going to do after now. I told you that what we have here as acyl CoA is a very long chain. So after the beta oxidation, what happened? Acetyl CoA, which is a two carbon, is removed from the very long chain. So if they give you, let's say, a 16 carbon fatty acid, what I mean is 16 carbon is something like this. One, two, okay, let me count. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we have 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This 15. Let me add one here. 16. Now, if you have something like this, C double bond O and this. This is what? A cycle E. And this case is permitoy uh, CoE. Are we getting it? Now, after the first beta oxidation, what do you what are you expecting? It means that from here like this we break off. So we are still left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Are you getting it now? After the second one again, it will also um this was supposed to break here because this is where the carbon is. Inside carbon, one, two, two carbons out. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You understand? So it means that this 14 carbon again we undergo another beta oxidation until two breaks out again. So we have one. So if this two is out, so we start again from here. Here becomes one, two. This two we go again. So it means remaining 12, we undergo the pro process of beta oxidation again. So it means that a particular fatty acid can undergo beta oxidation as much as possible until all its chain has been reduced to acetyl CoA, which will then be transported to the Krebs cycle for further metabolism to generate ATP or to generate energy in form of ATP. Is that understood? Now, I want us to pick special interest on something. It means that one cycle of beta oxidation generates how many ATP? One cycle of beta oxidation. What we are the product? Now there are two. Uh, uh, it generates NADH. Are we getting it? One NADH. So we come here and say one NADH. Are you getting it? It generates how many FADH? First of all, what was generated first was FADH, which is this. During the course of the reaction, if you look at step one. Step 1 generate FADH2, which was sent to the electron transport chain, according to what we said, right? So, it generates 1 FADH2. Now, note, FADH2 in the electron transport chain, if it enters the electron transport chain, which is ETC, it all usually gives 1.5 ATP. That was why I said it's approximately 2, but the exact amount that is calculated is 1.5. So, during one cycle, also, we used one NAD. Are you getting it now? So, we used one NAD or one NADH was what produced. Now, when NADH entered the electron transport chain, it generates 2.5 ATP. Now, what did we generate again? We generate acetyl CoA, which is one is acetyl CoA. So, we say one acetyl CoA, which we enter the acetyl CoA is not enter the electron transport chain, but it will enter the Krebs cycle to generate 10 ATPs. 
Are you getting it? So when asset cycle A enters the Krebs cycle, it generates 10 ATP. So at the end of the total reaction, what are we expected to have? Now, this is where most persons want to really uh, focus on or learn. Now, you may be given, let's say, a particular fatty acid. Let's say, um, palmitic acid. And they will ask you, calculate the total amount of ATP. Now, remember that the first stage, before we talk about that, remember that the first stage, which involves, uh, the first stage, which involves, the first stage, which involves the conversion of acetyl-CoA, I mean fatty acid to acetyl-CoA, I've cleaned that stage off. If you look at it, if you go back to the first, the, the, the beginning part, you agree with me that there was a particular stage, which is the oxidation stage. Are you getting it? We have the fatty acid was oxidized to acetyl-CoA, I mean acyl-CoA, rather, fatty acyl-CoA. The first stage when the fatty acid was uh, was activated to fatty acyl-CoA, it uses 2 ATP. So it means that anything that we are going to get at the end of the day, we subtract 2 ATP that was used to oxidize the fatty, uh, to uh, activate the fatty acid to fatty acyl-CoA. Now, for instance, they may ask you to, how many ATPs are produced for complete uh, beta oxidation of palmitic acid. How many ATP we have produced from complete beta oxidation of palmitic acid? Now, palmitic acid has how many carbons? 16 carbons. Are we getting it now? So, what you are going to do is come here. Now, let us see how many steps palmitic acid will actually undergo or how many cycles with fatty acid undergo in order for all of its carbons to be converted to acetyl-CoA. Now, we said after the first step of beta oxidation, it will change to how many carbons? 14 carbon. After the second step to 12 carbon because after each step, acetyl-CoA is being formed. That is to say that two carbons are being removed. So, after the next 10 carbon, then 8, here will be remaining 6, here will be remaining four and then finally is what two so how many cycles actually yield this this is one two three four five six seven so it means that it undergoes how many cycles seven cycles and now the question is how many acetyl coa we form now if you want to know the acetyl coa that we form remember that after the first stage acetyl coa was formed second stage acetyl coa was formed third stage this one was formed after each of the stages, acetyl CoA was formed. So the total number of acetyl CoA that we have formed will be the number of stages here, which is, will be the um, what we have here in most cases, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight acetyl CoA formed. Eight acetyl CoA formed. Now, so if they give you to calculate for that of palmitic acid, now what you are going to do is Remember that one cycle of beta oxidation yields one FADH, which gives 1.5 ATP. So you are now coming here. You are now say seven cycle for seven cycles. Let's say for seven cycles, what are we expected to have? For the seven cycles, what are we expected to have? FADH H2. We said for one cycle is how many ATP? 1.5 so for seven cycle night will be 1.5 times 7 which this will give us 10.5 atp now for nadh one cycle of nadh yields how many atp it yields 2.5 atp so seven cycles we yield how many we yield 17.5 atp now the next one is acetyl coa one acetyl CoA gives 10 ATP in the Krebs cycle. So, how many acetyl CoA we have gotten? 8 acetyl CoA. So, we we'll now say acetyl CoA hmm, is 10 ATP times how many we have produced during the course of the reaction for palmitic acid? 8. So, this becomes 10 times 8, which is 80 
ATP. Okay, now sum all your ATP here together and tell us what you have. Now, this will give us a total of 108 ATP. This will give us a total of 108 ATP. Is that understood? 108 ATP. So, you now come here and say 108. Remember that I told you that during the conversion of fatty uh, SI or fatty SI to fatty SI could a two ATPs be utilized. So you now say 108 minus 2 ATP, which will give us 108 minus 2 ATP is what? 106 ATP. Okay. So total ATP or net ATP from the complete uh, beta oxidation of palmitic acid is what? 106 ATP. Now, also, they may not give you uh, palmitic acid. They may be giving steric acid. Now, steric acid is how many carbons? 18 carbon acid so you must look at the number of cycles that it will undergo and the amount of atps that it will form so for 18 we go from 18 to 16 this is one step from 16 to 14 another step 14 to 12 another step 12 to 10 another step 12 to 8 another step to 6 another step 4 and then 2 which is 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, in this case, how many steps did it undergo? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, we see that it undergo 8 cycles. Now, the number of cycles, if you add 1 to it, it usually gives us the number of fatty acid, um, yeah, acetyl A that is formed. Is that okay? So, how many acetyl A will be formed in this case? This is 1. This is what? 2. This is what? 3. Uh, here is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we form 9 acetyl 1, 9 acetyl CoA. Now, at the end of the day, let's calculate now. We said for 8 cycles, what are we expected to have now? Now, flavine and then in dinucleotide into the it, uh, electron transport chain is 1.5 ATP. So for eight cycles now it will be 1.5 times 8, which we have our answer there. 1.5 times 8 is what? 1.5 times 8 is 12. So this will give us 12 ATP. Now NADH it gives 2.5 ATP. According to what we said, then eight steps will be 2.5 times 8 which is about 20 so this one is 20 ATP now in the Krebs cycle acetyl CoA gives generate 10 ATP so 10 ATP times 9 steps which is about 90 ATP so when you add everything here now it's going to give us 12 plus 20 plus 90 and that will give us 122 ATP total. But this is not the net. Because the net, we said we subtract the 2 ATP that we are used for activation of fatty acid. So we we'll say minus 2 ATP. And this will give us net ATP. Net means after you must have subtracted everything from it. We give us 20 ATP. So this is everything you need to know about the better oxidation of fatty acid. Thank you.